Hi guys, welcome to Digital Tech Join. In this video, Microsoft Azure Cost Management, we are going to learn about the tool Cost Analysis and Management provided by Microsoft Azure. We will be going to Azure portal and see what are the different types of reports can, that can be generated and downloaded. We will also learn how to create budgets and also set alerts so that we don't spend extra money and money that we don't actually plan and it is an unplanned expenses that can come up when you set up any resources on the cloud. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and understand. This is my sixth or seventh video on Azure. This is my playlist provided in the Digital Tech Join channel where I've covered how to create a free Azure account and learn about the different uh, learn about the different tricks and tips of portal and set up your own first VM, deploying your ASP.NET application and uh, deploying ASP.NET application along with MS SQL Server database storage and how to upload documents or delete documents using web APIs. So all these interesting videos are already available in my channel and I request everybody to go and watch it and like and subscribe my channel. So let's go to Azure portal and understand the practical uh, approach to manage cost management in Microsoft Azure. So guys I have logged into my Microsoft Azure account digital tech journey at gmail.com and here you can see on the dashboard Azure services we have cost management you can also access cost management by searching in the search bar so you say cost management and you'll be able to see the cost management and you can also click on the left hand side side menu and access the cost manager from this area so let's go ahead and click cost management from the console and here you can see uh, the cost management dashboard is loaded so there are a lot of uh, tutorials available where you can learn the various types of approaches that you can take and uh, set up reports and dashboard and control your uh, spend basis uh, uh, setups that you do so here in your left hand side you can see um, the cost management options and most is interestingly we will be accessing cost analysis so go and click on cost analysis and uh, cost analysis will give you a complete uh, view of uh, the resources and the cost that is you know, the expense that you have incurred now i don't have any record right now but i am going to select uh, options over here for this year yeah so i have done a couple of videos on azure so i have incurred certain costs but not much so here you can see the dashboard cost management um, cost analysis dashboard where it gives a very beautiful and very intuitive uh, dashboard this can be downloaded in different format so let's go ahead and i'll just explain in a very simple terms what are what are these and how can you utilize it so first and foremost is the scope that is a subscription so this is my subscription that is i have enabled the pay as you go subscription here you can select and you there is a you can have multiple subscription under the same account so you can have a subscription for your development you can have a subscription for your production you can segregate this so that you can manage the cost effectively so this is a so by default i have a scope of uh, subscription so basis this subscription whatever utilization i have done it shows the dashboard now if you look at here on the dashboard there is something called the area chart which shows you from where my expenses occurred since I have selected 2023 and I started tutorials in April so you can see the cost is rising over here not much but uh, this is the three months cost that uh, overall is shown in this uh, year 2023 so now if you can see view there are various options selected i'm going to run through each and every one so uh, in the accumulated cost so this current de default dashboard that is displayed it is, uh, is based on accumulated cost now but there is an option where you can select cost by resources daily cost cost by service and invoice details and also resources so these are the options that you can select now if you're moving ahead you can also select the, uh, the period now here you got a lot of options you can see the current billing period last seven days this month and then also there's a date range given you can select the date and then you can select the from and to date then you have the last uh, invoice and uh, last seven days so relatively you can choose almost all the options for date range i have selected this year because i wanted to show you some, some data and then then we also have add filter now among this data that is displayed which i'll explain there is something called add filter so you can select this and then you can select any of the parameters that is displayed over here for example i select location the moment you say selection look select location you can see on the right hand side there's an option of drop down and it will give you the option to select 
those location that you had used it so that you can select those uh, areas like you can do a multi selection asia and in center and say okay so you can see the data is getting refreshed and basis the data re uh, selection that I did that is Asia and in center I will be able to filter out all the services and the locations for which I'd use this uh, service so this is also one of the uh, great feature where you can um, filter out based on your custom requirement moving down this is uh, something called you can also group it so if I want to group it from billing period I can do group by location I can do then um, as, as i mentioned there's all an option for to see accumulated cost or monthly cost and finally if you want uh, some other type of graph you can select a, by default is area graph but you can select line graph so this is the line graph and then if you want a column so you can add a column graph as well so uh, so uh, you can see the cost between the may and june is sim uh, very much uh, in lines or similar that is the reason both the graphs are showing in the same area so this was the options where you can select it now going down you can see uh, there are three categories service name location and resource group name so here you can select this option and then you can select the resource as well if you want to drill it down so i say that i want to see this graph based on resources so once i select resource it will uh, show uh, all the resources that uh, i'd I use and the cost of it so by default it shows based on service name but there's an option where you can select and select an own um, type of option i can also take based on the billing period so there are these two billing periods so all these flexibilities is there then we have location wise now this shows all the location obviously you can click on it and select your own location as well so there's an option where you can say, uh, see it location wise currently it is showing location wise but you can select other options as well um, I always recommend that you whenever you create any resource on Azure make sure you tag it because when you tag it it is very simple and you can also do filtering based on the tags so this is one thing which you can do then obviously there is resource group name so I have three resource group name um, resource trail and then digit, uh, digital tech and tutorial resource group so if you this this is basis basis to uh, it gives an option for you to group all the resources basis under one category so i can have the uh, resource group called production uat and uh, dr or testing environment and then accordingly you can manage my costing and resources so it's a very fantastic way of uh, sorting out and segregating your uh, cost management um, expenses and everything into a categorization so on the top we have uh, something called download you can uh, download the entire dashboard in png format and i'll just show it to you how does the download uh, look and then you can uh, mail this to um, anyone who requires it so for example this is a download i'll just click on it and here you can see it is downloading the png format this you can mail it uh, similarly there are other format as well uh, when you want to download uh, then there is something called uh, subscribe you can uh, basically subscribe uh, you add your email to it so that whenever there is a change in any trigger or something it will mail you so this is also a wonderful feature which you can use it okay so i have covered the cost analysis dashboard now coming back to our budget so this is one of the important um, area that you need to understand now uh, let's go ahead and add one budget so budget will help you to manage your cost and it will also help you to alert so let me just show this practically so create budget and then uh, in the budget you can also add a filter so if you want to create a budget only for resources only for location based then you can do that and then i enter a budget so i say digital uh, digital tech joint budget and this budget period i can select either monthly quarterly early i'm going to select monthly then I'm going to select August and uh, I'm going to select uh, August 31st. So this is a period that I'm creating a budget for and this will be my budget amount. Okay. Now the moment I type the budget amount, uh, I can see that the budget amount line is drawn in the graph which says 5000 and these are the three parameters, actual budget and forecast. So this is the budget that I want to keep and then I click on next. So here uh, there is a fantastic feature like here you can uh, set alerts so this will ensure that you are not spending more than what you planned. So I select uh, the actual budget so I say actual budget should not go more than 90 
uh, percent that is 4500 and the moment i type 90 percent you can see it has drawn a line in the graph 4500 so this is my actual budget 5000 4500 is my actual and the moment it crosses that it will uh, set up an alarm so it is in the mail to me so i'll say digital uh, will join the date gmail.com and you can add multiple email address and then also i can add one more action and say if it cro crosses say 80 percent so here i can select an action group so what happens this is sort of an automation so when the budget crosses 80 percent and above that is here you can see 80 percent and above there is something called action group which you can explore like uh, you can create your own action group you can see manage action group and in this action group you can uh, either uh, call a uh, service and then uh, shut down certain uh, vms or you can uh, decrease the uh, scaling of certain resources or you can trigger a mail so this is like before the threshold is limit you need to add uh, sort of uh, one level of uh, alertness by setting uh, 80 percent of threshold so once it crosses 80 percent you can select an action group which will perform certain uh, automation without uh, you know your intervening and then after when it crosses 90 percent is where it will trigger all the mails and everything so that you are aware that, that there is a threshold happened so these are the two uh, like budgeting which um, like you know i just wanted to uh, show it to you and the moment you click on create it will validate it and your budget will be created so your budget is created over here where you can see the budget creation date budget amount and what is the forecasted and what is uh, what is the progress you can see the progress and obviously there are two parameters set in front of you i have just configured it one is the bu budget alert and one is 80 percent threshold where you can go ahead and do some action group and avoid spending more than what you have planned so this is this uh, was uh, how you manage look at your cost analysis and how do you uh, manage your budget and set alerts then there is something called advisory recommendation so when you click on advisory recommendation right now if you see there is no recommendation over here because i have not used most of the resources but um, i have uh, created this for found this link in microsoft uh, learn microsoft.com uh, advisory which introduce you to azure advisory and um, it will help you basically to align your resources and it will give you recommendations so that you can save cost and uh, here the link will be provided in the description of this video now i'll just show you how does the advisory look so this is how the advisory will look i'll just open that in a new dashboard uh, screen so this is this is how the advisory will look it will give you uh, rec recommendations on your availability on your security on your performance on your cost and on your operational excellence so these are these are the recommendation that you need to follow and the recommendation will uh, have something called like this like you know add more v virtual machine for improved fault tolerance uh, so add more version for improved uh, something that sort it will show you and it also give you the impact whether it is a high recommendation low or a medium recommendation uh, so use premium disk to improve io performance something like that so i guess this is this is a, a more recommendation on uh, performance wise similarly you will have recommendations for uh, cost management as well so i recommend that you know once you in once you uh, onboard all your resources in the cloud and set up the budget and everything uh, you should always uh, uh, keep a tap on the advisory section because this will give you an automated uh, report and it also gives you option to create alerts and everything so uh, this was uh, more uh, on cost um, management in azure we covered the dashboard that is cost analysis we covered the budget alerts and we also covered the advisory uh, and now let us understand and uh, go through few of the uh, tricks and tips in order to save cost in azure so guys some of the points that i've jotted down in, for this video is uh, right now in front of you uh, obviously there are more uh, but these are the most uh, used one in order to save cost so first is uh, make sure that you do the uh, correct uh, purchasing options so there are there are many times where people go uh, to azure cloud and uh, without understanding they select uh, other options for example they want to go for a um, dedicated host uh, they will uh, 
go for a on demand resources or they will go for certain configuration which they don't know whether it will be um, benef uh, sufficient for them but they uh, do a lot of buffering uh, for example if you want to go with 100 gb they will go for 500 gb or something like that uh, so first of all you need to know your requirement and accordingly set up those configuration because this configurations are very important and this actually de defines and you know this actually um, you know um, is a reason for your uh, cost that is generated at the end of the month so make sure that you do the correct uh, purchasing option uh, by understanding your actual requirement then there are the option like uh, we recommend that you go uh, for pay as you go subscription and or you go for a dedicated service for a longer period for example when you go for azure reserved instance or reserve capacity uh, it uh, goes for uh, one year or three year then you get a huge discount uh, which can go up to 60 to 70 percent compared to pay as you go service so if you know, if you know and if you have a vision of using a resource for a longer pre period then i definitely re recommend that you go for a dedicated uh, reserved instance then obviously use uh, the free uh, trail option of uh, microsoft azure uh, that gives you around uh, 200 credits and it also gives you certain services uh, for 12 months free where you can go ahead and explore the services without incurring any cost and if you want to know how do you uh, create a microsoft azure free trial account then the video is uh, available in my channel and it will be also displayed by the end of this video and the links also given in the description of the video and then make sure that you shut down those vms which are not in use for example let me give you a real uh, example when we were developing um, our uh, azure applications uh, and uh, we were actually uh, we had created instances in um, server instances on azure so we used to use our vms only during our development uh, time uh, like for uh, 10 am to till uh, you know 6 or 7 pm and after that we used to uh, shut down those vms uh, so that it is not running and does not incur any cost to us uh, then we can use uh, various automation tools like auto scaling or auto scale down and even shut down the services basis and certain criteria so that you know we don't use unnecessary uh, or use the resources available in azure then uh, consider using spot instance i know uh, many people are not aware of this but when you uh, create an instance on azure there are various option on demand spot instance reserved capacity dedicated host dedicated instance or something like that so when you go for a spot instance it's totally uh, based on the bid so if you bid for the lowest uh, uh, cost and then if you get those uh, instance uh, with you based on the whatever cost you had bid then you get that instance and that instance is uh, available to you uh, till somebody bids it on uh, a much lower cost or something and so you should plan your spot in such a manner and you should deploy so those services that can resume its work so it uh, make sure that you don't go for spot instance when you're doing some critical batch processing it is something more of a uh, 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 processing that you can use which can take up the hit of uh, shutting down and then can resume uh, without you uh, spending a lot of uh, time and effort in uh, you know uh, reprocessing it again the so spot instance is typically for batch processing that i can uh, say in this video then um, ensure that you delete those resources that are inactive so many times what happened we create some instance we create some services and azure we completely forget about that uh, maybe we use it for to analyze something or to uh, identify how the services work and then we totally lose track of it and it is uh, running in the background it is eating your resources and the cost so make sure that you use the all resources option of, of azure so that you can see in one place all the resources that are active and then decide which resource is not in uh, in use or inactive you can delete that then there is something called bring your own license byol which says that you can deploy your own app on-prem application on azure but you don't need to buy azure license but you can use your existing license so that you don't spend money purchasing the license uh, then we have um, the tools that monitor your azure cost that i just showed you uh, how do you create your budget and how do you alert so that you make sure that there is a boundary of cost or uh, spend that you will do it in azure and it doesn't cross your threshold so so this is it guys uh, this was a very short video on uh, microsoft azure cost management i tried to cover all the important aspects uh, please do uh, subscribe my channel share with your friends colleague and family help us to grow uh, this digital tech journey channel and if possible try to join our membership and please do recommend my channel with everybody uh, thank you for your time